Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I was checking this video out the other day and I meant to respond. Uh, but the spirit had me do it now. It's Elder Apostle Tahar. Elders in Transit 3. Make sure you subscribe. Be edified. Title of the video. One like the son of man came to the ancient of days. Daniel the prophet did see the face of Yahweh. All right. And he saw. All right. The most high God Yahweh in a vision. You know, which can be found in Daniel, the seventh chapter. You know, and as you have particular camps trying to say the God of the Old Testament was, you know, always, you know, uh, Yahweh Shai, and it was never the Most High God Yahweh. You know, actually, when you're saying Yahweh, all right, uh, it's the same as Yahweh Shai, which is a, you know, a weird doctrine that's popped up amongst other weird doctrines. We're not going to get too much into that. Um, the Apostle Tahar uh, goes into it, but as you see in this video, you know, it will, it will, it will, it's clear, it's clear in the Holy Scriptures, it's clear to those who have ears to hear and eyes to see, all right, that uh, there is a force that established Yahweh Shai, all right, that's why Yahweh Shai is called the Alpha, all right, and the Omega, all right, he has a beginning, he has an origin, Okay, we can't go into the scriptures and find the origin of the Most High. All right, and for many people, you know, it'll bug you out. You see? But anyway, we'll get into all of that. Um, the scriptures clearly say in Proverbs, the 34, the 30 chapter, 30 of chapter and the 40 of verse, it says, Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? All right, who have gathered the wind in his fist? Who have bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established the ends of the of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name? If thou can tell, what is his name, and what is his son's name? If you can tell, okay. So there's a name for the Most High God Yahweh, and there's a name for His only begotten Son, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Now, when you get Daniel the seventh chapter. Okay, he sees a vision of the Most High sending Yahweh Shai, all right, to, to you know, uh, make a judgment on the great whore Babylon the Great and to take down the kingdoms of the heathen and reestablish the throne of David. See, and that's the goal. Okay, and when you read this chapter, Daniel the seventh chapter, Daniel receives a vision of four beasts which symbolize rulerships and kingdoms that would dwell in the earth all right pretty much from the time of solomon's kingdom being rent you know uh judah and ephraim being split okay which that's what the throne of david represented you know up to the time about king hezekiah we went into the assyrian empire all right and that was you know years down the line from solomon's kingdom being rent you know, we were, you know, Judah and Israel were warring back and forth with each other. All these rebellious kings, few of them did right, you know, on the side of Judah. But eventually, the Lord got fed up with the northern kingdom. And he put them into captivity under the Assyrians. See? So, these, these empires you read about in Daniel, the seventh chapter, all right, not only is it speaking of um rulerships that are documented you know rulerships that ruled in the earth um it's also a sign of the scattering of the israelites as they would go into these various different captivities up to the point where he reestablished the, the throne of david all right under yahweh shai you see so again we always go into this but the, the uh first is the Assyrian Babylonian Empire the second all right is the Medes and the Persians all right the third the leopard is the Greeks the fourth is the Romans okay now 
as Daniel describes the Roman Empire, the fourth beast, okay, he brings up, all right, another little horn, okay, another little horn. Verse 8, and I considered the horns and beheld, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. This little horn represents the revival of that fourth beast, which is really fulfilled in America. Okay. Babylon the Great. You see? The the uh and, and as you read this vision, all right, what you what you learn, if you're measuring the time diligently, is that the decision of the Lord reestablishing the throne of David comes with the destruction of this little horn. Okay? It says, And I considered the horns, and behold, there came up another little horn, okay, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were the eyes of a man, Okay, representing his science, his pride, his technology. You know, he's boasting and being God, but here it is, you're, you're a man. <laughs> you were created. And a mouth speaking great things, his NWO, his idols. Okay? And we're seeing those great things being spoken. Atheism, there is no God. We can, you know, uh, create our own water if he brings a famine. We can overcome the most high. Okay? We're the, the, the Jewish people, you know? All of that. Okay? America supports those small hats. Okay? These presidents are, are pro small hat. So they, they, they have a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Now, when you read verse 9, it says. All right, as you see here, the ancient of days reigns. And how is the ancient of days uh, uh, going to reign? It's going to be through his son, as we're going to show you. He's going to set up a judgment. Okay? This is the book of Daniel 7 and 9. It says, And I beheld till the thrones were cast down. The thrones of what? The thrones of the heathen. All right, as the scriptures say, all the horns... I think it's Psalm 78, Psalm 75 and 10. All the horns of the wicked will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be established. And horns sim symbolizes rulerships. Okay? Power. Okay? So the, the thrones that are going to be cast down are the thrones of the heathen. All right? All of their rulerships are going to be taken. But it, when the Lord returns, okay, the main beast that will be ruling is the revival of that Roman, all right, empire, that beast system. See? So if you're looking at this with a spiritual eye, the Heavenly Father is getting ready to make a decision. See? And when you read Revelation, the 13th chapter, he gives you an insight into what this little horn, which is Babylon the Great, what will be happening, you know, in that beast system as they will bring forth their mark. They will force their image. See? So so we're at that time where the Lord is getting ready to what? Cast down the thrones. Okay? And the Ancient of Days did sit. Okay? Now why is he the Ancient of Days? Because he has no beginning we can't find his origin in the holy scriptures okay let's get the book of job right the book of job chapter 3 or 36 salakia and 26 it says behold all right god is great and we know him not neither can the number of his years be searched out see now when you deal with yahweh shai Okay, when you deal with Yahweh Shai, okay, Proverbs 8 and 23, this is wisdom, the most highest of wisdom is his word, and that's all fulfilled in Yahweh Shai, okay, 
and this is Solomon speaking here. This is Proverbs 8 and 23. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning, all right, or ever the earth was, all right. Yahweh Shai himself, all right, let you know, all right, in John the 17th chapter, right, John 17. And 24, father, he's speaking to his father. He couldn't be speaking to himself. I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Okay, so Yahweh Shai was loved by the father before the world was even created. He was chosen from the foundation of the earth. Okay, he is the beginning. Even when you read Genesis 1, it's the most high presenting his son in the sense of the Allahim and his sons. All right, the government and order which he established from the beginning. And it starts with his son. Okay. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me, that's that ride or die body. Okay, so Yahweh Shai was loved before the foundation of the world. He was chosen. Okay, when you get the book of Micah, the fifth chapter, as Yahweh Shah is described in the form of a prophecy that he would come as a child and be born and rule. All right, Micah 5 and 2, but thou Bethlehem, Ephratah, all right, that's the land associated with Bethlehem, okay, which at the time of Ruth, okay, uh, Boaz. Uh, got with her okay but she came with the deal that came with this land okay and then eventually they had Obed who had Jesse okay who eventually had David I believe that's the order and that's the lineage of Shai comes from all right this was the land David was born in this is the land Solomon was born in all right, this is a very, uh, it's a lot of rich tradition that goes with, you know, uh, Bethlehem of Judah. Because there's another Bethlehem that belongs to one of the uh, northern kingdoms. Two Bethlehems, but Bethlehem, Judah. All right, when you see Ephratah, it's a fruitful, you know, it's, it's a beautiful land. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, it's not a large amount of land, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel whose goings have been from old all right from everlasting all right and the word everlasting real quick okay it could mean some a few things but Iowa lum long duration antiquity okay now what is antiquity okay what is antiquity the ancient past all right, especially the period before the Middle Ages, times, ancient past, classical times. Well, this goes back to the beginning. Okay, this goes back to the beginning, man. Okay, old, ancient. All right, when you read this scripture in a, uh, let's read it in the NLT. But you, O Bethlehem, are only a small village among the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel will come from you. Okay, he will, Yahweh Shah was going to be born in that land. It's a prophecy of him coming and being born in Bethlehem, which he was. Okay. One whose origins are from the distant past. His origins. Okay, what is an origin? The point or place where something begins. So Yahweh Shai has a beginning, right? We can track his be beginning in the scriptures, all right? Because the Most High, all right, he's the only, he's the first spirit the Most High created. Everything else comes from him. He gave his son the blueprint. And that's what's being described here in Proverbs 8. I was set up from everlasting. All right, verse 23, from the beginning or ever the earth was before the foundation of the earth, before this world was founded, right? Before this, this, this earth was created, okay? Spirits were created, okay? Before the earth 
began. I was appointed in ages past at the very first before the earth began. See, so this book is heavy, man. You see, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water. Again, before the foundation of the earth. This is what this is describing. Before he prepared the heavens, fields. When he, you know. And as you see here in verse 30, it says, Then I was by him as one brought up with him, his son. And I was his daily delight. All right. I was his de uh, daily, his delight, rejoicing always before him. See? <laughs> Yo, um, let's get this in uh, the NLT. I was, his, I was the architect at his side. See? I was his constant delight, rejoicing always in his presence. All right, so the Most High did everything through his son. As a matter of fact, okay, let's get the book of uh, Second Edger 16. All right, Second Edger 16, and let's start at uh, 54. It says, Behold, the Lord knoweth all works of men. Their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts, which spake but the word, let the earth be made, and it was made. Let the heaven be made, and it was made, and it was created. All right, he spoke but the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with power. It was with the Most High God, Yahweh, and the word was a power. See? In his words were the stars made, and he knoweth the number of them. See, in his word, see, so he set up his son, all right, to get what he wanted done, done. So when it comes to how the kingdom is going to be set up, okay, he's going to do it through his son. So as you read here, Daniel 7 and 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow. So this, this is speaking of the Most High. We're going to show you it's speaking of the Most High. He's the Ancient of Days. Again, his years can't be searched out. All right. Psalms, all right, chapter 45. All right, verse 3. Great is Yahweh, all right, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. See, we can find the greatness and origins of the of, of Yahweh Shai, all right, in the word. But the 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 the, the most high, <laughs> he just is. He has no beginning. How could you wrap your mind around, all right, uh, the 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 uh, the uh, the most high, not having a beginning. See, that that's in, it seems impossible. Okay, let's get Ecclesiastes 11 real quick and then we'll <laughs> get into the lesson. All right, Ecclesiastes 11 and 5. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so knowest thou not the works of the Most High, all right, the, the, all right who maketh all. Okay. So, that's heavy. An uh, uh, orgasm leads to a, 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 a human being growing inside of the uh, womb of a, of a woman. Whew. Far out. <laughs> so, Daniel 7 and 9, as you can see, the Most High is going to make his decision to send his son, as we're going to show you, through the fall of this little horn, Babylon the Great which is described in Revelation 13 chapter as a beast with two horns like a lamb, the revival of Rome. Daniel 7 and 9, And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. So he has a garment. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. So D D Daniel is seeing the Ancient of Days. He, he, he shows you he has a garment on. 
All right, he shows you he has hair, he has a head. Okay? And Yahweh Shai told you he looked like his father. <laughs> all right? Yahweh Shai, all right, when you see, you know, when you when the when the he's seen in his glorified state, he has, you know, the head of his hair is well, white like wool. Okay? You know, uh, feet of brass. Okay? So he looks like his father. Just like your son could look like you, right? It says his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire. This is what he's seeing. Okay, he's seeing the throne of the Most High. <laughs> In a dream. Imagine having that dream. A fiery stream issue, all right, and came forth from before him. Thousands, all right. And thousands ministered unto him, all right, those angels. It was angels ministering unto the Most High God, Yahweh. And ten, all right, thousand times ten thousands, all right, stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. The judgment was set. The books were open. Now, we know the book of life is the elect being delivered, all right? But there's also judgment to be set, all right, for these heathen. And for two-thirds of our people as well. See? So the Most High is getting ready to make his decision. You see? Now, Yahweh Shai lets you know in the book of Matthew. Okay, the 24th chapter. And we'll start at probably the 33rd verse. Alright? Matthew 24 and 33. So likewise, when ye shall see all these things. This is red letter. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. Know that it is near even at the doors when you see all these prophecies come to pass. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Showing you that that generation that was back then is here today. They're going to be in the earth through a process of regeneration, reincarnation, and they're going to get their judgment. Some are going to be delivered. All right, but a lot will be destroyed. You see, it says, heaven and earth shall pass away because there's a generation set to be a part of that fire. So it's nothing that they can do to escape it. It has always been. <laughs> and it always will be until it's fulfilled. And then once it's fulfilled, it will always be a memorial of what happens to those, uh, uh, to those who rebel against the Most High and His Son. So in that sense, it's, it's an eternal judgment. Okay, it says, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. They're set. Okay, He doesn't speak empty words. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. See, let's read this in another version. <laughs> and this shows you a separation of the father and son. Okay. But what people will say, well, he don't know when he on earth, but when he back in the heavens, he know. Okay, shut up, man. He ain't going to be sent until the father tells him to be sent. He, even on the right hand side right now, he doesn't know exactly when he's going to be sent. Okay. But his father is going to send him. All right. To deliver his, his children. Okay. Um, this is uh, the same verse in the NLT. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven. Or the son himself. Only the father knows. And, he, and that father has a name in the scriptures, man. Okay? That father has a name in the scriptures. And, and, and that name is Yahweh. Remember the disciples tried to ask Yahweh Shah here in the book of Acts. <laughs> 1 and 6 it says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel see what they wanted restore was ultimately what was rent 
all right, and us eventually going into these captivities. See, the time that they were asking Yahweh Shadis took place in the fourth beast. See, we're living in the revival of it. Right here, as they're asking Yahweh Shai, are you getting ready to restore the kingdom to Israel again? Okay, that, the, the, the Romans were ruling at this time. See? <laughs> Before that, they were in the Greek Empire. But see, look what Yahweh Shai tells them. Okay? He says, and see, we wouldn't be delivered in that fourth beast. We'll be delivered out of the revival of it. See? So they were they kept asking him, Are you gonna restore the kingdom to Israel? Are you going and what's the kingdom to Israel? It's the David's throne, the reunion of Judah and Israel. And it couldn't have happened at that time because the northern kingdom wasn't even in the land. They had left. All right, showing you that their understanding wasn't all the way there yet. But here in Babylon the Great, as the Lord said to the disciples, and he said unto them, is it, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father have put in his own power. It's in his power. See? It's in his power when he's going to send his son. It's in his power when he's going to take down the heathen. And we're subject to that. Let's get 2nd Edges, the 4th chapter. Okay, 2nd Edges, the 4th chapter. And we're subject to it. <laughs> There's nothing we can do. This is the book of 2nd Edges 4 and 35. It says, Did not the souls of the righteous ask questions of these things in their chamber, saying, How long shall I hope on this fashion? When cometh the fruit of the floor of our war? When are we going to get the kingdom? That's what they were asking then. And unto these things, Uri the archangel gave them answer and said, Even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for he have weighed the world in the balance. Meaning you're going to come back, all right, in different captivities over the years. And there's going to be a final one. And, and, and that's going to be, all right, in the final, you know, captivity of the Israelites, okay, where you will be raised up, okay, the elect will be raised up here. Um, that's when I'm going to bring it. For he have weighed the world in the balance. For by measure hath he measured the times, and by number hath he numbered the times, and he doth not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled. See? He's not going to move nor stir the times until the said measure be fulfilled. And when is that going to be fulfilled? That's only in the, the, the hands of the Father. See? Yahweh Shah is letting you know. I don't. It's not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth, which goes to the scattered Israelites, all right, but in particular here in the America, the uttermost part, the last captivity where Judah and Ephraim are going to be raised up. That's when he's going to restore the kingdom. You see, but as it says here, no man knows that time. See, Daniel is seeing, all right, the Most High, okay, uh, uh, getting ready to set up a judgment to bring that time. He's just seeing it in a vision. And we believe through the Spirit that we're close to this, okay? And again, if this isn't the end, then what rulership or what empire pursuant to Daniel's vision are we in and what's next? Which empire is next? Anyway. So he saw the books. He saw the judgment. All right. Uh, uh, being set. All right. In verse 11. Daniel 7 and 11. He's seeing in the vision. He saw the most high. Sit on his throne. He's, he saw the most high. The angels come before him. All right. Because the a, a, a judgment is getting ready to be set. Okay. And I beheld, Daniel 7 and 11, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. So he's looking at this horn, Babylon the Great, speak these great words, 
wear out the saints, as you read later in the chapter, as he expounds on this beast, live in, in, in wickedness, change laws and, you know, do all kind of wickedness. He's witnessing it. He's seeing it in the vision. He's seeing the voice of the, 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 uh, the horn. He's, he's hearing the boast of an NWO. He's hearing the heathen rage. Daniel 7 and 11. But, and I beheld, all right, because of the voice of the great words, because Esau is the end of the world, right? Esau is the end of the world. So this judgment associated with the fourth beast and the little horn that issued forth from it, which is the revival of Rome, has to be associated with Esau. Let's get that. All right? Or am I tripping? Second Edra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Hold on one second. So Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So he is seeing, okay, if you put line upon line, precept upon precept, Daniel is seeing the end of Esau's world. Okay? So again... Let's read what it says. Daniel 7 and 11. I beheld because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain, his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. And this is speaking of what's going to happen to Babylon the Great. As a matter of fact, let's get Revelation 19 or Revelation 18. Revelation 18, okay, Revelation 18 and 8, therefore her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God that judgeth her, see, <laughs> this is what's coming of this thing called America, man, see, Revelation 19 and 1, and after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power. OK, this is what's coming for us, man. Could you imagine this day? For true and righteous are his judgments. See, you're, you're going through the part of waiting on the Lord to set it up and it gets hard at times. But just know that his words ain't going to go out void just as the hell and the suffering and the captivity was written aren't is not the destruction of this place written and us being restored so after these things i heard a great voice of much people in heaven because we're going to get beamed up right <laughs> we're going to be in heaven we're going to be in the chariot saying hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power unto the lord our power for true and righteous are his judgments for he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and avenged the blood of his saints at her hand and they said again hallelujah and her smoke rose up forever and ever and the word hallelujah in the hebrew is all right halalia halal halal yahawa or ha, uh, halalaya all right halal is praise Yah is short for Yahweh. That's how you know the name of the Most High is Yah. Starts with Yah. Okay? Which means He. Alright? And Hawa, He exists. He is. Alright? And the thing is, when you come into this thing, you must believe that He is. And how do you know that Yahweh is? It's through His Word. Okay? <laughs> and, and that's fulfilled in His Son. So Daniel sees... Um, the most high make a judgment. Okay. It says, Daniel 7 and 12, we're going to show you how that judgment is set. Okay. Daniel 7 and 12. And as concerning the rest of the beast, all of the other heathen nations outside of Esau, Edom, they had their dominion taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time because they're not going to receive the new covenant. They're still going to die. Okay, their, their powers are going to be taken away. They'll be subject to the dominion of the throne of David. However, they won't be in the same position as Esau. As a matter of fact, Isaiah 14 goes into that. All right, Isaiah 14 and... Let 
you know, the fall of, you know, the king of Babylon, the wicked. He's called Lucifer in this chapter. Okay. And when he, when you fall, these nations, you know, there's going to come a point where they realize that you were full of it and that you were wicked and that you led them in a wrong path and that you were a destroyer of the earth. Okay. All of the nations eventually are going to start to mock you once they see our kingdom being set up. See? Isaiah 14 and 16, they that shall narrowly see thee shall look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the earth of the world as a wilderness, that destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Yes, this is him. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, everyone in his own house, because after the nations are judged, eventually they're going to just go to their own quarters and be subject to our dominion. But thou, Esau, Edom, are cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, as the raiment of those that are slain thrust through with the sword, that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trotted underfoot. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial. Okay, because the uh, heathen are going to have their rulerships buried. They're no longer going to be powerhouses in the earth. You'll be disarmed. Okay, you'll put off those wicked ways. So you're not going to be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers will never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, all right, the remnant and the son and the nephew. So that, that, that way of wickedness, that way of rebellion that was forwarded through these Edomites through Babylon, that whole image is going to be cast out along with the people, all right, who are associated with it, the Edomites. They won't be joined to the heathen in the sense of being, you know, after that a thousand year period, they got to go. All right. And we got lessons on that. So as you see in verse 13, the son of man is presented. Okay. And we know prophecy goes in and out of time frames. You see, but when you read Isaiah 19, Okay, Isaiah 19 and 19, it says, And in that day there should be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof unto the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto Yahweh because of their oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. So he's going to send a savior. Okay, this is the one, all right, who the Most High is going to ascend, okay, to do this great deliverance and this great destruction. He is salvation. He is the deliverer. He's the one that the Most High set up to do this, okay? Psalms 80 and 17, let thy hand be upon the right, uh, man of thy right hand, upon the son of man whom thou have made it strong for thyself. Okay? <laughs> He's going to pluck that right hand out of his bosom. See? Whew. Psalms 110 and 1, the Lord said unto my Lord's, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. As it says in that chapter. See, Yahweh Shai is. Um, he's, he's the one the Most High is going to send. He's going to strike through kings through at his right hand. See. Woo. John 5 and 22. For the father judgeth no man, but, but committed all judgment unto the son, that all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father, which have sent him. 
Okay? He ain't just sending him to say hi. He's sending him to deliver us, man. But Jake don't want to worship him. Or it has to be these stipulations. Well, I don't, you know, look, man, either you reverence the man or not. And y'all going to pay for that guard, that confusion, man. All right. Because he didn't come to the earth as a man to be bowed to and all of that. He wasn't here for that. He was there to do the, the will. OK, but you best believe, man, as he is elevated back to his right hand position, man, the angels are bowing to him and your ass is going to bow to him. All right. Either willingly or uh, to be forced. <laughs> All right. Daniel 7 and 13. And I saw in the night visions one like the son of man. OK. And the son of man, basically son of the earth. You know, when your is described. OK. Um, he's described, you know, in a, in a what's that? Revelation one. All right, Revelation, the first chapter. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Revelation 1 and 14. The head of his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like the, uh, were as a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice was as the sound of many waters. So, again, he has hair. Okay, woolly hair like his dad. All right, he has eyes, he has feet. When Daniel saw him, he has arms. Let's see. Daniel 2 and 6, his body was also like the barrel. He had a garment on, a green garment, and his face was as the appearance of lightning. Symbolic of wisdom in his eyes as the lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in the color of polished brass. All right. And the voice of his words were like the voice of a multitude. This is Yahweh Shai. And see, when when he when we get beamed up, first John three. It says, beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that we shall be. Uh, but we know. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So we're gonna be, we're gonna have that those bodies. Okay, it looks like a, 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 a earth man, but it's glorified. And we know Yahweh Shai is gonna be taller than all of the rest of the sons of God. <laughs> so uh, be how is that gonna look? We we'll see. But he's seeing. All right, as what does Yahweh Shah say? You're going to see the Son of Man. All right? Because this is how the Most High is going to save. Just like in Egypt, it was the right hand that be of Yahweh that became glorious, that dashed the enemy into pieces. It's going to be the same thing here. Matthew 26 and 64. Yahweh Shah said unto him, Thou says, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power coming in the clouds of heaven and that word right hand right that word right hand dexios goes into a place of honor and authority see wow so Daniel 7 and 13, and I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came to the clouds of heaven, or came with the clouds of heaven, and came, and that's those chariots, and came to the Ancient of Days. See, he came to the Ancient of Days, and he brought him near before him. Let's read this in another, see what it says in another. And my vision continued that night. And I saw someone like a son of man coming in the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one. All right. And was led into his presence. He came to the ancient of days. See. Wow. And was brought before him showing you. And see the ancient of days has a name in the scriptures. Okay. Yahweh. 
All right. And we believe that first and foremost through faith. But we've brought out the, the proof and the evidence, man. See? So he he's he has to be told to come and deliver us and to destroy this place. This is how he's gonna get it done. All right. And again, this is all to set up the throne of David, man. And there was given unto him dominion and glory. In a kingdom that all people and nations and languages should serve him. See, all of those heathen are going to serve him. But see, he he tells us in Revelation 2. I'm going to share that with you. Revelation 2 and 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works to the end. To him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Because they got to be put in order as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even, even as I have received of my father. So he received all of these things of a particular power. And that power source is the most high God, Yahweh. See, so the Yahweh is going to set up his son, his king. His son that you should kiss or embrace. Right. He's going to set him up and give him a kingdom. All right, which comes with dominion. And he shared that with us, starting with his wisdom. And glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. All right. Which shall not pass away. And his kingdom is that which shall not be destroyed. See that? So. Daniel saw a vision of the most high. Okay, sending Yahweh Shai. See? And they're two separate powers, man. All right? I believe that's all I had. Um, point was made. What's that? John 12 and 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but my father which sent me, he gave me a commandment of what I should say and what I should speak. See? And he's going to give him a commandment to come back and to deliver us at his appointed time. Shalom.